Sponsored by McCams, getting you back on two wheels when it wasn't your fault. So the Ducati Scrambler is now in its sixth year of production. It's hard to imagine that it wasn't last week that I wasn't riding the original 800 in California, seemingly now all those years ago. I've picked my favorite from the range. Remember, it's one of the largest ranges that Ducati offer now. It's the 1100. This is my living with review. So why is it my favorite? Well, let's come up with a stupid Goldilocks analogy. That whole thing about too little, too big, and just right. For me, it turns out that too big is just right. The 450, which we had fun on at World Ducati Week last year. I say we had fun, I actually mean I crashed it quite a bit, uh, but we did have some fun doing a little bit of a flat track school. That 800 original, which is the, the kind of home run bike for Ducati, that's, that's the big hitter. That's the one that sold, I think, 60 odd thousand units globally in the time between launch and now. It was good fun, but physically for me it was a little bit too small, and in terms of power, who, who doesn't want more power? I thought it could have done with a little bit more. The Desert Sled, a properly cool bike. I really enjoyed bashing my way around London on it. And actually, when it comes to the Crunch, that's a bike that's got the, the skills to pay the bills as well. That's why we packed it off for a long and dirty weekend with Chris. But when it comes to the Crunch, for me, there's, there's no replacement for displacement. Can't believe I've just managed to work in an old American hot rod tagline. So a year ago, when we went on the launch of this bike in uh, Lisbon, in Portugal, it was a slightly deflated feeling from me and the other journos on that trip because on paper the bike only makes about 13 horsepower more than the 800. It doesn't sound like a huge increase in power and arguably if you're comparing this Scrambler 1100 to its natural competitors from Triumph, BMW R90, Kawasaki Z9, all those things, it is probably about 20 horsepower shy of where it needs to be on paper. But as I like to try and remind you guys, the reality out there in the real world, which today is the North Circular, not the South Circular at the Ace Cafe, you should be hard pushed to notice the difference in power. You're not going to miss it. The torque that this thing has got, the drive and the punch that it's got, for me, makes it one of the best town bikes that I've ridden in the last couple of years. So if we just segregate Scrambler 1100 and don't bother thinking about the competition, what is it that you're getting? Well, you know, it is longer, it is wider. I think it's 50 mil wider than all of the other Scramblers that you can buy. It's still got a fairly appealing ride height. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I've decided not to get too hung up on all the numbers that this thing has just give you my opinion but but I know based on the thousands of other bikes that I've ridden the seat height is a comfy and easy one to get on for me at 511 I think if you know as long as you're not the wrong side of five foot you're gonna be fine getting on and off this thing it just feels like there's a, a, a more substantial and chunkier bike than any of the other scramblers in the range but there's also something else that this bike does that that only Ducati can do and that's the perfect combination of Ducati and Termagoni exhaust. This bike's got a really, really raucous set of pipes on it. I absolutely love it. So there's a couple of different flavors of Scrambler 1100 that you can go for. If you're feeling flush, you can pay a little bit more money and have the one with fancy Olin suspension and you know a couple of other trick bits and pieces. But, but the base model does everything I think that you would need if the majority of your riding is like I've been doing for the last few months. You know, running your kids to school, picking up bits and pieces from the shops, uh, just bopping around on a bike day to day in a big city. I think the reason why it appeals to me as much as it does is the range of ability that it has. If I'm doing the school run, for example, I've got one of my daughters on the back, there's stacks of room for both of us. It, it's such an easy bike to ride. You could stick this thing in, in riding schools, take the badges off the side and nobody would know how big it is or how scary or dangerous it's supposed to be because it's a big 1100cc bike. Another welcome addition for me was the extra disc at the front over the 800 version. It's a Brembo setup. Uh, ignore the names, ignore the fancy bits, and just for me, all I've been doing is focusing on the feeling and quality of the brake system. You know, we've just been through a fairly miserable winter. Arguably, we haven't had any snow, thank God, but there's been a few real kind of pissy, slushy days. Uh, you know, salt everywhere, grit and grime, the kind of stuff that would eat into a brake system if you weren't keeping on top of it and cleaning. I'll be honest, I haven't touched that bike. I haven't cleaned it at all. All I've been doing is putting miles on it and putting fuel in it. The brakes still look and feel incredibly capable and just reliable. I love them. They work well with the suspension as well, which is adjustable, but as I keep trying to bring this review back to my kind of day-to-day, real-world living, 
I live in a city, so there's not much point me adjusting the suspension and trying to dial it in for the kind of riding that I'm doing. As it came out of the factory, it's perfect for me. And I think, you know, as long as you're not um, built like a pepper army or, or you live on pepper armies, there's no need to adjust the suspension. You can just jump on the thing and ride it. So I know after the launch in Lisbon, there was a little bit of a feeling that the shock wasn't quite up to the job in terms of offering the same plush feeling that the front end suspension had. But consider again, much like I've just been banging on about, we're on faster, wider, more open roads. Uh, and now I'm remembering getting absolutely savaged in the comment section on YouTube for sticking my foot out in the rain going around some of those corners. This is a great chance for me to tell you that those roads were like glass when it rained and, if, and I just felt like sticking a foot out. There was a little bit of a weird supermoto vibe going on that day for me uh, and it made me feel cool. That's the reason why I stuck my foot out, sorry guys. So like I said, I'm gonna try not to get too hung up on chucking numbers at you. I know the exact amount in millimeters in difference between the width of bars on Scrambler 800 compared to this 1100. And this isn't me pleasuring to invisible men at the minute. This is me showing you what's going on. It is a wider bar set on the 1100 compared to the 8. And there are occasions when you are trying to cut a bit of a dash across town where you need to do that weird jigging thing where you just push one end of your bars around the mirror of that car and then feed them around that car. But on the move, I think the leverage that they offer is worth the compromise. Those couple of occasions a day where you just think, bloody hell, these bars are a little bit too wide. It might also be something to do with the fact that the mirrors are on the ends of those bars. So you just get this impression of the thing being really, really wide. It isn't, and you can indeed cut a fine shape through the traffic when you need to. So just one on those mirrors, the producer's just asked me to remind you, because he's just reminded me, that the bike that I've been riding has been properly pimped by Ducati. They're all factory accessories, but they're all extras that you would need to choose. So mine has indicators, pegs, brake and clutch reservoir, the little LED headlight surround, these are all factory fit accessories. If I was in the market to buy a bike like this, I think I would try and swallow it at the purchase point and just tick all those boxes and get it done straight away because you'll probably spend three or four years nicking each one of them as you go anyway. And then eventually you'd get to the stage where you've got all the bits that you want on your bike. But I think Ducati do, uh, they'll chuck accessories into your PCP or whatever, you know, however you want to do it. Sneak them in at the start, just swallow it and know that you've got the bike looking exactly as you want it from day one. One of the other gripes that we had on the launch was the weight. This bike weighs 200 and I told you I wouldn't stick to numbers. This bike weighs quite a bit, let's say maybe 206 kilograms or something like that. Again, this is just an on paper figure. It's something that I don't think matters when you are riding the thing, moving it around, maneuvering it, spinning it around on the side stand. All of the things that you do day to day, the shape of this bike hides the the weight that this bike has very well when you're dragging it around, when you're not riding it, and when you are riding it, good luck guessing how much it weighs when you're on the move. It's the best looking clock set, I think, on any of the Scramblers. It's not just round like the Scrambler 8, there's like a, a little kind of loft conversion that's going on in the top left hand corner. It just gives you more screen to look at, more information to be able to read, and I think it suits the style of the bike, which is this kind of contemporary retro. It doesn't look like anything from the olden days, it's just a retro bike, so it, it doesn't need to have like a Smith's clock, like some old E-type Jag. It, it's allowed to have digital bits and pieces. I think they suit the nature of this bike perfectly, and also, in practical terms, the information that it's feeding me while I ride is in the perfect place, and there's just the right amount of it. Despite me just saying that the clock set is really good and gives me all the information that I need, uh, it doesn't have the provision to tell you what kind of MPG you're getting, so I have absolutely no idea what MPG I've been getting uh, what I do know is it seems to be pretty frugal. I can't remember the last time I put fuel in it, and I probably won't need to put fuel in it, at least today. What I do know is that tank is bigger physically. I think it has a capacity that might be 15 litres. This is me trying not to just chuck numbers at you. But in terms of the, the dimensions and stature of the bike, everything is just a little bit bigger than other scramblers, which suits uh, my size physically and also what I'm looking for in a bike. I like the size and shape of the tank on this thing. I love the color. Again, it's that weird gray that Ducati do. So one of the things that I've been doing with this bike is thinking about uh, what it's lacking or reasons for you not to be interested in it. Uh, and by all means, if you've got one and you've got gripes, stick them in the comment section down below. But I'm struggling at the minute to find reasons not to buy into it. Again, you know, there's an assumption that because on paper it doesn't make as much power as its competitors and it doesn't seem to make too much more power than the 800 version, so you'd be hard pushed to justify choosing it, but I think the kind of power that it makes is exactly right for this bike. You know, it, if it had 120 horsepower, who knows how good or bad those brakes and suspension might feel? Who knows, you know, whether the chassis would be able to cope with all that power? It's ticking all kinds of boxes for me, and again, you know.
know, reasons not to buy it. This is me genuinely struggling to find some. The great thing about, about these living with reviews is, you know, the fact the bike is a year old now, and there are used examples out there in the market. So again, if you are at the bottom end of your budget, I think you could probably get into one for about seven and a half, eight grand. It would probably already have all those accessories on it that I was talking about earlier. Somebody else has already made it their own and it, you know, they might have made the perfect bike for you. So don't just consider the new bike price. There is also um, uh, a used approved Ducati system where you can buy secondhand bikes in their showrooms as well. Have a look, you might find one. This is probably one of the longer living with reviews that I've done and I've had absolutely zero issues with it. It's started every time I've wanted it to. It hasn't carried on running when I've turned it off, which, you know, when I was a pup, I've, I've seen Ducatis doing that with my, old, with my own eyes, but that was, you know, 20 years ago. They're not, they're just not like they used to be. The service cycles that, that Ducati has developed for all of their engines are ginormous. You know, 10,000 miles before an oil change, 15,000 miles before you need to check the valve clearances, these are, these are you know, big chunks of mileage. When you think the average biker, and I'm lining some of you up to prepare you to type into the comment section, the average biker does less than 4,000 miles a year in the UK. I'm sure there are lots of you out there that do way more than 4,000 miles, and I'm not having a poke at, at any group, but that's the average mileage. So if you can imagine 4,000 miles a year, you know, you are, you're, four, eight, you're nearly four years into ownership before you even need to change the oil in the thing. Scrambler 11 has uh, DTC. There's a couple of levels of traction control that this bike has. I'll be honest, again, because it only makes 80 whatever it is, 85, 86 horsepower, I just had it off all the time. And when it's off, you can, you can pop a cheeky wheelie if you like, here and there. Um, but, you know, just because bikes have traction control, the glory of the systems that they have is, if you don't think it needs it or you're happy without it, just turn it off. You know, I don't remember test riding bikes that only made 80 or 90 horsepower 15 years ago and going, eh, it needs traction control, really. So just turn it off if you don't want it. But when it's raining, it's a welcome addition. You can whack it on, turn it up to its highest setting, and still enjoy the bike. Have some faith in those Pirelli tires, uh, and just cut around and do your thing, knowing that you've got a little bit of a safety net there. But just don't be afraid to turn it off on this bike. It's not gonna chew you up and spit you out the second you get on the throttle with the traction control turned off, trust me. So I've been ignoring my phone from Ducati UK for the last couple of weeks. They've been hounding me for this bike. I think they want it back so that they can do other stuff with it. I don't really want them to have it back. It is what it is. You know, we're gonna pack up today and send it back to them begrudgingly. Uh, I've had a brilliant time on it. I don't think I could get from here to my house in Southeast London quicker on any Panigale, V4R, whichever one it is, World Superbike Panigale. Don't think I'd get there any quicker than I could on that bike. Again, don't get too wrapped up in the numbers that you're looking at when you're seeing new bike reviews. Don't get too tied up in the fact that this isn't the most powerful bike yeah, in, in terms of it and its competitors. The real world nature that it has and the way that it delivers the punch that it has means that you are capable of getting yourself into loads of trouble or beating all of the other bikes around you, if you like. That's a plus point for me. That combination of kind of retro cool street scrambler thing plus enough power to have some fun equals almost the perfect motorcycling recipe for me. I'm not pretty enough to match this view, so I'm gonna put my mugger's face mask on and get out of the way. It is beautiful today. Sponsored by McCams, getting you back on two wheels when it wasn't your fault.